This is two homemade thermocouples in series back to back. They were easily made from ordinary copper and steel wire. The junctions were made by soldering the steel wire ends to the copper wire ends. The solder between the joints doesn't matter because of the second law of thermocouples. The low resistance of 12 gauge copper wire and 14 gauge steel wire allows the flow of enough current to deflect a compass needle while heating one junction with a flame. The wood block allows optimal placement of the coil and compass. The compass needle is most easily deflected when it is perpendicular to the coil axis. A flame placed under the opposite junction will cause the compass needle to deflect in the opposite direction. It is possible to deflect the compass needle very slightly by heating one thermocouple junction with the heat from my fingers. The Earth's magnetic field, however, acts like a spring pulling on the compass needle, making it relatively difficult to be deflected by the magnetic field from the coil. By carefully placing one or two magnets near the compass, we can cancel much of the Earth's magnetic field and make the compass needle much easier to deflect. We now get a much larger compass needle deflection when a flame is placed under one junction. By applying just the heat from my fingers to one junction, we can now observe a very noticeable deflection of the compass needle. I wanted to try making my own magnetic field indicator by hanging an ordinary ceramic magnet inside the coil from a string. I was able to get these magnet deflections. Just one magnet was used to counteract the Earth's magnetic field. The thermocouple voltages generated are generally less than 1 millivolt, but impressive amounts of current will flow if the circuit resistance is low. 5 feet of 12 gauge copper wire allows about 9 turns around the compass while keeping the circuit resistance very low. A standard milliamp meter in the circuit adds far too much resistance to be inserted into this circuit. This simple loop is also made by soldering ordinary copper and steel wire together at the ends. The current it generates is easily observed using a clamp-on DC current meter. Just like the compass, a clamp-on DC current meter adds no resistance to the circuit and can accurately indicate the amount of current flow through the wire. One junction can easily generate 5 milliamps just by applying the heat from my fingers. By touching the opposite junction to a piece of ice, we can easily observe 20 milliamps of current in the same direction. A flame under a junction will generate so much current that the meter has to be switched to a higher range. In this case, the junction is easily able to generate 80 milliamps of current. With the current probe connected to the coil that we used earlier, we observe values of current similar to those observed through the two-wire loop. 